You may not experience though. You must have heard of all kinds of warfares. Hot war, cold war, nuclear war, biochemical war, cyber war, civil war. Or you must more or less experience school bullying, family violence, and community fights. Although today, for the most of the time, we are living in a peaceful world. Never are all kinds of warfare far away from us. Through human civilization, the World War II, which happened 75 years ago, is the most destructive one in human civilizations. The death toll of it is the largest ever, over 60 billion, which is far more than any others. Also, if we open up the world map, never can a continent escape from warfare as long as humans exist. Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, America, even Arctic and Antarctic. So why? Why people wage wars? In this video, let's talk about the two main arguments and discover the, what the real war is for all lovers. Nature or nurture? From an anthropological perspective, the earliest evidence for prehistoric war belongs to the Mesolithic Symmetry, Site 117, which had been determined to be approximately 14,000 years old. Because of the evidence of it, anthropologists believe wars are the nature of mankind. It was Dr. Richard Wonham. Professor of Anthropology at Harvard University, who first pointed out that there is revolutionary pressure for all animals to access accurately when it is not worth fighting. The spread use of rituals in anticipation of combat usually determines who is the superior party, thus preventing numerous actual fights. Evolutionary psychologists also agree with this hypothesis. There are two main schools. One sees organized warfare as an emerging or after the mass lasik as a result of complex social organization and greater population density and competition over resources. The other sees human warfare as a more ancient practice derived from common animal tendencies such as territories and sexual competition. The latter school argues that since war-like behavior patterns are found in many primate species such as chimpanzees, as well as in many ant species, group conflict may be a general feature of animal social behavior. Clinical analysts such as EMF Dorbin and John Bobby have argued that human beings are inherently violent. This aggressiveness is fueled by displacement and projection, where a person transfers his or her great violence into bias and hatred against other races, religions, nations, or ideologies. By this theory, the nation state preserves order in local society while creating an outlet for aggression through warfare. So why people wage wars? Use or all? According to Gunnar Hesson, a German author, sociologist, and economist, and a professor at the University of Bremen, who proposed use bulge theory in its most generalized form. A use bulge occurs when 30 to 40 percent of males of a nation belongs to the fighting age cohorts from 15 to 29 years old. Peasants of both past Cretanist European colonism and imperialism, as well as today's Islamist civil unrest and terrorism as a result of a high birth rate producing young bulges. Among prominent historical events that have been attributed to young bulges are the roles played by the historically large young cohorts in rebellion and revolution waves of early modern Europe, including the French Revolution of 1789 and the effect of economic depression 
upon the, the largest German youth cohort ever in explaining the rise of Nazism in Germany in the 1930s. In 1994, Rwandan genocide has also been analyzed as the following of a massive youth bulge. Maybe this is why male teenagers are hard to control themselves to fight with others and school bullying. Youth bulge theory has been subjected to the statistical analysis by the World Bank, Population Action International, and the Berlin Institute for Population and Development. Youth bulge theories has been criticized as leading to racial, gender, and age discrimination. But not all people agree with youth bulge theory. In many cases, people believe the youth are more kind, innocent, and more likely to be manipulated by the elders. So basically, people at all young ages can wage wars. The only difference is they do in different ways. No matter what you tend to believe, let's look at our brain on how it works when people wage wars. Neuroscience. The emotional center of the brain is the limbic system. It's located lower in the brain and it is considered to be more primitive than the cortex. When someone is experiencing and expressing anger, he or she is not using the thinking part of the brain, but the primarily the limbic center of the brain. Within the limbic system, there is a small structure called the amygdala, a storehouse for emotional memories. During an overriding event, the amygdala goes into without much regard for the consequences. This reactive incident has come to be known as amygdala hijacking. When the amygdala is hijacking, a flood of hormones are released that cause physical and emotional alarm. By the way, on average, it can take 20 minutes for a person who has experienced an anger state of arousal to calm, to move from functioning from the emotional area to the thinking area of the brain. Also, the psychological drive for revenge is another example of an essential human adaptation with an revolutionary impact. Research in neuroscience shows that the prospect of inflicting retaliatory punishment triggers pleasure centers in the brain. Psychologist and linguistic Steven Pinker argued that war-related behaviors may have been naturally selected in the ancestral environment due to the benefits of victory. He also argues that in order to have credible insurance against the other group, it was important to have a reputation for detailation, causing humans to develop the incense for revenge as well as for protecting a group of reputation. In individual level, particularly on leaders or a powerful group, a desire for revenge has led to some humans' history most enormous wars. Anyway, due to all documents and studies and all kinds of anti-war movies, the destructive and catastrophic results of all kinds of wars can't be more obvious to all lovers. Deaths, blood, tears, homeless, criminals, and the darkest side in human nature. But you know what? There is one most important advanced and hardest type of warfare on all of us without such visible destructive cost but within the most pain. The war against ourselves in our hearts. 2000 years ago, Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, once said, the first and best victory is to counter self. To be the countered by self is of all things, the most shameful and objectionable will.